Hey, what's up everybody? So in a previous video I did about all of my FJ Cruiser mods, I included a few mod ideas that I was thinking about doing in the future. And one of them was a garage clicker mod. My current situation is that I have a garage clicker uh, seated in this little uh, section here. By the way, I'm curious to know what everyone else uses this section for. Uh, it seems to be the perfect little uh, spot to place a rectangular garage clicker and it goes right there so really uh, it is kind of the ideal spot but uh, i hesitated to do any modifications to the garage clicker uh, because eventually i'd have to turn that in whenever i uh, move out of here however i just wanted to try it and just wanted to see uh, if it'll work all right so this is my toyota push switch and they fit exactly in the switch blanks there are regular push switches and then there are momentary switches um, if you take a look at my other mods in the FJ, I use some regular push switches, which means that when you push the button, um, it stays in place. But this one specifically is a momentary switch, which means that when you push the button, it returns back to neutral. And all of these switches come with, these, uh, with this wiring harness, which uh, clicks into the back here. All right, so this is my garage clicker. Now this is a three volt system and the FJ Cruiser runs on a 12 volt battery system. So the easiest way to do this is just to kind of leave the battery inside and let the internal cell battery power the garage clicker. So I'm gonna start by opening up the garage clicker now. So I'm actually sitting inside my garage now. Uh, if I press this button, the garage uh, door should close. But here is the internal battery. It's a CR2032 three volt battery. And now I'm just gonna simply pull this piece out. All right, so here's a look at the circuit board for my garage clicker. You can see it's got one button. So this is the cover that goes over it and this is the button that you press. When you depress this, it depresses this uh, little button here so press that so that opens and closes the garage door so I know that my leads are connected to this uh, momentary switch so if I flip it around I'm looking at any one of these these four leads one two three four so what I have to do now in order to see which leads I need to connect I've basically found that when I take any wire and I connect them together, whatever activates the garage door are the two leads I want to connect. So I already know that I'm going to be dealing with these four. Touching uh, a wire to these two will connect them and you'll see what happens. Okay. And the same thing goes on the other side, these two leads, these two right here, if I touch this wire to the two leads, it, it connects the two. Okay. So what's happening is touching this metal wire to connect these two leads or these two leads is closing the circuit and activating the switch. So what we can do is take our momentary switch, connect some wires to these two leads and then uh, activate the momentary switch. So you might have different color wires, but they all correspond to the same thing. So if you're looking at the um, release switch in front of you, then it's the two wires on the left. So then these two wires on the right side are gonna be reserved for your uh, illumination of the switch. I'm gonna test this switch by holding these two leads to either one of these sets, this set on the left or this set on the right. So when I touch the two, they will activate the garage door. All right, you guys see that? So these two leads are connected to these points here, and I'm just gonna take my switch and push the button, and it should activate the garage door. All right, so that's working as expected. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna solder these two wires to these two points. So just looking at this, the bottom of this case, there is a little bit of space here at the very bottom that I can probably squeeze some very, very tiny wires through 
And what I might end up doing is I might take an existing Ethernet cable and uh, take one of these sets of wires in here. So if you look at the lead on an Ethernet cable, you see a bunch of these different colored lines. Uh, those can be small enough for me to kind of squeeze through there, which may allow me to feed some wires through here without having to drill anything. And at the end of the day, if and when I eventually move out of here, I can just unsolder the the leads and then just kind of leave it like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try and see if that's gonna gonna do the trick. So there's just a bunch of different wire sets in there. I'm just gonna cut this open and uh, pick pick a line. So here is a set of some, some wires. They're very, very thin. Here's the back of the garage clicker panel. So what I probably want is to feed a line through this little hole here. And it does make it up there. So um, yeah, I might be able to do this without drilling anything. But I got this super thin line that can feed the other side the other hole here so yeah this this just very well might work and I'm actually considering uh, leaving the wire loom here just because it's it's kind of a nice way to keep it uh, insulated uh, even though there are like I don't know four other wires alongside of it uh, this may just be a nice kind of built-in loom that uh, I can take advantage of so we'll see so now I'm going to strip these red and green wires from the switch harness. Alright, so I have a collection of heat shrink tubes and I'm just going to slide the heat shrink around uh, my wires on the harness before I do any soldering. So I've got the green here and the green, the red over here. So when this connection is complete, I will uh, have that ready to seal the connection. So I'm gonna go with the uh, orange and white on my green wire. And I'm just gonna cross the copper wires, twist them together. And I'll do the same thing with the red wire and the orange wire here cross them and then twist them together okay now that I got my wires crossed I'm gonna lay some solder all right so I'm getting ready to solder the circuit board and I'm just gonna grab my case here because I want to make sure I get the orientation right. It's going to go in like this, so my leads are going to go underneath in here. Before I feed it in, I'm going to strip some insulation off. I'm just going to take a, a hair off. And this is a very thin gauge wire. Uh, that should be enough right there. Okay, now I'm going to feed it through. All right, so here we go. I've got my leads through here. I'm gonna now solder this, so I'm actually gonna cut off a little bit of this. All right, so here we go. Since this circuit board is really tiny, I'm gonna solder a little bit of, uh, of the wick here onto the connection point. Probably could have cut off a little bit more of that copper 
on that first one. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. All right, got enough. All right, so here's a look at my soldered leads there. Just a little bit of solder required. So now I'm gonna just place this circuit board back into the housing here. All right, so there it is. Base plate's gonna go back on. All right, so there it is. I got my two leads coming out right here in the bottom. All right, so I think I intend to put my um, garage clicker into this little glove box here, um, right here. So I think I'll get a good signal here. What I'm gonna do it now is feed the harness through my little grommet here. So I've got the, the harness through the grommet. I'm just gonna continue to Pull it all the way through, make sure all the wires follow. All right, so I have my garage clicker here. Um, the wiring harness has been fed through, uh, and then I'm gonna attach the switch. All right, so here is my switch, it's plugged in. And then here is my black um, uh, ground, which I'm gonna attach to this bolt right here. As far as the illumination line goes, line red 2 is being connected via an ADA circuit to this 10 amp tail fuse. So it will illuminate whenever I turn on the lights. Alright, so I've put everything back together. Um, you can see my garage clicker is sitting right there. It's all wired up. I've got the momentary switch for the garage opener there. If I turn on my headlamps, the light illuminates. Moment of truth. All right, looks like we're in business. All right, you guys, so that is my FJ Cruiser garage opener mod. If you decide to do this yourself, feel free to let me know how it goes. And if you have any specific questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. So if you guys found this video helpful and informative, or if you just like the idea in general, please just hit that like button and it'll really help out my channel. I just want to acknowledge all of my viewers out there and for supporting my channel. I really, really uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I'm going to continue documenting my experience as an FJ Cruiser owner. So like and subscribe and I will catch you guys on the next video.